Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2023 Skoda Kodiak. This is the key of the vehicle. It does not flip. Lock the car, open the boot and to unlock the car. Anyways, this car has got minor changes, but now it's back on sale earlier. It was discontinued because they ran out of allocations because of the high demand. Hydraulic struts, insulation there. That is the engine quite refined. Of course, this is a TSI engine and here you can see everything else remains the same. Now, traditionally, this is the panel for ADAS functions for most Skoda cars, but you don't get ADAS functions on Indian Skoda cars yet. There's the camera here. You get front parking sensors, six of those. And this is the DRL. By the way, it also converts into the indicator. Lights are really nice. It says Skoda crystal lighting. This is the fog light. It gets a headlight washer as well. It has got functional vents right here for better aerodynamic efficiency. It definitely looks quite nice and wide. This is the LNK, the top variant. The length is around 4.7 meters. The wheelbase is around 2.8 meters. So yes, it is a long car. And the wheels on these cars, or rather on this particular car, happens to be 235, 55, 18s. Alloy wheel design could be a little bit more adventurous, but these are multi-spoke wheels. The sensor is there because of self-park, of course. You get this body cladding, badging here, LNK. There's a camera right here, request sensors on all the doors. And you get functional roof rails as well. Straight away, let's get inside. Now, the thing is that to get into the rear seat, it's very easy. I can just push it ahead like this. But rear seat comfort isn't good at all. Now you guys complain, I don't get into the rear seat, so I will. My plan wasn't to get in there because there is very little space for adults. So under thigh support is not there at all. Knees are up, not really for adults. In fact, headroom is also not that great. There's a light placement here. And this is actually to put the parcel shelf, proper seat belt that is. There you can see it feels very airy because of the massive panoramic roof. But there's some storage space here. 12 volt charging socket, adjustable headrest, which is kind of cool. But I need to get out from here. Come on, let's just push this and get out there. I can just push it. Getting in and out is not easy, but there's a handle to hold on to right here. Very minor changes to this car when compared to the earlier model. So you can push the seat all the way behind. That is the maximum legroom. So in terms of legroom and knee room, it is actually good. They've also added, I think, a footrest or something there. Under thigh support is better in the second row, but not the best. Slightly scooped out magazine holder. You got a 12 volt charging socket. Why is there no USB? I don't understand. Rear AC vent control, rather air conditioning control at the rear. But it's shut at the front, so that's not working right now. Center passengers actually welcome, although there's a big hump here, so best avoid it. Just use the center armrest, which has got two and a half cup holders, adjustable headrest, which is a good touch, and you get height adjustable seat belts. It says airbag in multiple places because this car's got nine freaking airbags. Light placement here on the top. Dashboard does look nice, but again, it's very similar to what was there before. Some difference in terms of the dashboard design depending on the variants, specifically speaking to the steering wheel design because this one is two spoke. You also get three spoke ones. This is beautifully lined yeah, so that things don't rattle there, of course. And you get a sun blind, which you have to manually use, of course. Stop saying, of course, again and again. Let's shut the door. Shuts with a nice thud. Now, notice one thing when I open the door, okay? There's this door protector which comes out. So this thing has been added as well. I remember seeing it on an older Kodiak. I think it was optional, but now it is standard. So this car has got only few changes. In fact, this has been added for better aerodynamics. At the rear, again, very much similar to what was there before. Dynamic swipe indicators there. Yeah, they swipe from inside to the outside. Skoda lettering says Kodiak. 4x4 rear fog light. This is the camera which actually gets uh, this thing spray to clean the camera. You get parking sensor, six of them. Facile Trans Fingers of Truth hunting for the exhaust, which is placed right here. This is a towing hook. Real exhaust is not there, which can be seen visibly because it's below here. In fact, it's here as well. So it's got dual exhaust. Both of them are actually hidden. You get a rear wiper washer as well. So it looks quite nice. Understated elegance, of course. This is where fuel actually goes in. You know what? This is chin to minto. The antenna is like really very small. And this thing actually comes out from here as well. Yeah, this protector comes out from here too. Seats are nice and comfortable. In fact, it says Lauren and Clement here, the founders of the company. Airbag written everywhere, like I told you. This is a 12-way power adjust seat. It has got three memory settings as well. There you can see there's a dead pedal. It says Kodiak on the carpet, mat, sorry. And this is also lined. This is to open the boot. It has got 12 speakers. Nice controls, illuminated, of course. And it says Canton. Canton sound system with 625 watt output. Two-spoke steering wheel. Indian start button seems an afterthought still. This is the controls for the headlights. There's some secret storage space here. Let's shut the indicator. Now, there is a big glove box, but what is this panel? I think for the CD changer, which doesn't have, so that is blocking some storage space. This is cooled, of course, and 
here you see there's storage space in fact you can remove this yeah you can remove it and take it home if you want this thing actually slides ahead and behind multiple buttons here traction control electric parking brake auto hold function mode selector off-road mode gear lever says choda 4x4 here you get a wireless charging pad position is not that great 12 volt charging socket and thankfully two usb-c charging sockets stop start system this is for the self park this is for the camera system there the camera is turned on and hazard lights lock the car passenger airbag will tell you if it's on or not dual zone climate control air conditioning it gets seat heating and ventilation as well so you have to operate that from here both of them can be can't be operated at the same time nice controls here on the steering wheel audio controls of course let's shut the door shut with the proper third this is a 10.25 inch virtual cockpit which by the way the style variant does not get it gets an 8 inch screen this is a 10.25 one it's nice easy to operate and this screen is an 8 inch one come on we need bigger let me get into vehicle let me get into settings lights a lot of things you can do it gets a tire pressure monitor as well we are actually going to come into the interior lighting which is something i need to go back for because it's a bit confusing because you have to get into background lighting there are 10 options for this let's get into reverse you can see the reverse parking camera front and rear parking sensors and then for self park you've got like multiple buttons okay it's helping you to park better so that function is also given in this car which is quite good auto dimming mirror massive panoramic roof like huge in terms of size but in terms of changes now they have only added like three four more features the car is the same as before because the car is already so fantastic now they didn't have to change much it opens even further so it's a huge roof there and there rather uh, a glass roof and a panoramic roof and there you get a mirror along with the light same is the case here as well there's a ticket holder here a lot of smart bits in fact let's use the wipers right away there you see okay there's good amount of spray on offer and the horn horn is nice and loud these are the paddles of course and these are the controls for the wipers automatic headlights automatic wipers a lot of automatic stuff a lot of tech in this car steering feels really nice to a lot of leather as well let's listen to an audio right away audio quality is actually very nice which actually reminds me whenever i walk from the other side now i forgot to open the boot of the vehicle so it's a 270 liter boot so i just press a button it's power tailgate if you come behind and stand now it will automatically open if you have the key on you 270 liters right now can be improved to 630 liters if i push this yeah there it is i can actually push the seat from here ahead so this is actually a 40 20 40 the middle one also declines and i'm pushing it all the way obviously isofix child seat mount okay you've got some storage space here big enough boot you can actually recline the second row and 2005 liters is what you get really nice below here you get the parcel shelf there's jack i don't know where rose is spare wheel is smaller size it is very chintu mintu in comparison because it's a 145 80 something something let me just shut this yeah there's a hook here there's another hook here quite practical in that regard power tailgate of course if i press a button there it shuts yeah it takes its own sweet time but trust me on this this car is a better alternative to the fortuner because better performance better ride better handling everything is better only thing is the fortuner has proven itself in terms of reliability and more rugged because body on frame platform that's showing you exactly which door is open so plenty of tech and features now if you notice one thing every time i put my finger near the screen it automatically brings up the colors it has this proximity sensor it's fantastic way i mean the way the things have been done in this car really nice and slick system but very similar to what we see in other skoda cars so i'll not dwell much into it but what i will dwell into is this fantastic new feature known as head and neck support which you can just open like this so when the car has been driven you can actually sleep peacefully and your head will not get disturbed because it will just be right where it should be yeah skoda's features are simply clever let's start driving right away let's start this drive by going for a high speed run in the new Kodiak. I'm calling it new, but it's more or less the same. Let's see what top speed I can hit. Which means first and foremost, let's turn off the air conditioning. Yeah, the air conditioning is off. We get into drive mode. We get into the car setting. Actually, we'll get into the mode selector. We are in sport mode and the dynamic chassis control, handbrake down and off we go. Now at slower speeds now, this car is very smooth, very refined. You can't hear a thing. That's how refined this engine is. Obviously, it's a petrol engine. Earlier, the diesel one was like, clattery but no such issues here and that is the beauty of the smoothness this car has so we are going to be launching it straight away here we are left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator come on launch control did not work but it oh my god it bogged down this car does have launch control but i don't know why it's not working so let's see how does it accelerate oh it's extremely smooth extremely refined this gearbox is also quick with shifts 
and red lines around 6500 rpm so straight away we are going to be going for the top speed now this is a 2 liter tsi evo engine known as the ea888 it produces 190 horsepower and the torque output is 320 newton meters now that 320 newton meters of torque comes in at a low 1500 rpm and stays there till 4100 rpm giving it a very wide torque band and that is the reason why this car feels so good in terms of drivability it has a nice mid-range punch through this sort of a not really a corner through this section i am completely flat on the floor in terms of acceleration and the car is pulling smoothly and nicely yeah there's a lot of wind resistance at the moment that's the reason i can feel a lot of wind noise as well engine can't be hurt because of this beeping sound which is coming from this what do i call <laughs> the speed alert system but yes it feels very stable which is quite surprising yeah the car feels extremely stable even at these speeds right now we are in fifth gear okay i'll upshift to six taking manual control of things 212 so i don't think this car is going to hit the top speed of 218 kilometers per hour purely because we are having a lot of wind resistance at this current moment yeah that's a bit of a problem oh my god look at this it is doing 218 yes we hit the top speed it's not going to go any new 19 will we hit 220 oh yes we did hit 220 and 221 yeah off the throttle time to coast let's see how fast it stops i'm just going to put it in seventh gear because why not it has this feature known as decoupling of the engine when you're cruising in order to reduce the amount of fuel which is being consumed so this has been purely done so that uh, efficiency improves in fact this is bs 6.2 or rather in skoda speak bs 6 B, which is the second version of the BS6 version of this car because it means RDE norms right now result is it is 4.2% more efficient and now I can floor it that it gave me a downshift yeah into we are in fourth gear right now engine is very smooth and refined but it's not very aerodynamic but um, they have improved aerodynamics of course but problem is that uh, it's an SUV so obviously it is going to have a lot of wind noise or a lot of road noise also comes in but uh, somehow road noise is well contained now these tires are not really what I would call as performance tires more towards comfort as such steering feels really nice it feels quite stable at these speeds it inspires a lot of confidence so it doesn't feel nervous at all that's the beauty of this car now there are three variants on offer there is the base style there's the mid-level sport line and this is the top variant known as the LNK price range between I think 45.12 lakhs all the way to 49.11 lakhs so yeah pricing is on the higher side of course but then they have only 750 units allocated per quarter so they have improved or rather increased the allocations for this car from what was there before so 3000 units a year the fortuna actually sells around two to and a half thousand units every month and even though it's more expensive the Fortuner sales are just through the roof. The Kodiak is actually better than the Fortuner in many ways. It's a monocoque platform, of course. So ride quality is very good indeed. And it's also quite capable, which we'll find out in some time because we're going to go off-road as well. There you see more wind in this particular direction. So yeah, and there we are going to lift off right away. We're going to slow down. Brakes are actually nice and sure-footed. A little bit of wavering under heavy braking purely because this car is an SUV so you have to actually fight the wind as well but yeah it's a very nice easy car to drive which is the good thing nice steering nice ride and handling balance as well and now let's get in body roll will kick in of course because yes there is considerable amount of roll here but it's a nice car to drive not anyone I mean no one's actually going to go all the way to its top speed but if you need it this car can actually do it and that's the beauty of this car because it's a global product so it offers you all that and more I think we should go off road in the Kodiak, I'm going to drive real fast. I think it's already in some off-road mode. It has got something known yeah. as DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control, wherein you can change through various drive settings. It alters the engine, the gearbox, the steering wheel, the suspension. It's got adaptive dampers, and you can raise or decrease the right height by around 15 mm. So all that is also there. On these bad roads, I feel that the suspension is actually quite good. So it is soft, it is very compliant as well. And I think the low profile tires are making themselves felt a bit. This is a side incline test. Straighten out a bit. Yeah. Easy peasy. Parking sensors become so overactive and then I think it's getting stuck a bit, but then obviously four wheel drive, so no problem on that front. Done and dusted, On to the next one. Basically follow the white lines. Yeah, just wide out and then at an angle. Straight? Yeah. Probably <laughs> lost momentum. No, no, it'll go. Yeah. 
some things are done intentionally for fun <laughs> that was one of them right this right yeah okay let's make this a rally stage instead real suv going off road there maruti ertiga 4x4 engine is so smooth and refined you can't hear a thing right now okay left yeah one second i shall use the cameras if i can yeah Okay okay sure. <laughs> Just keep going you'll get a Ah uh, I got a good view. <laughs> Not better than me. <laughs> of course of course. Down hill assist I don't have to press yeah. the brakes either it just so happens it on its own yeah hill descent control and everything is just making it super easy braking on its own. Some people actually sleeping right ahead. This one seems very deep. There see I am not touching anything. I'm surprised the front is not touching so they have obviously made the track according to the car. because there seems to be decent clearance i think i shouldn't get onto the throttle and move ahead advantages of a monocoque chassis is that uh, on such roads you don't bounce around like you do because obviously monocoque chassis is much better it's unibody otherwise in the fortuner you rock a lot but the fortuner feels indestructible this feels good the fortuner is obviously way more capable however i will not deny the fact that it's a very smooth experience driving this car and that's the reason why people like such kind of off road vehicles 4x4 It's largely a front wheel drive vehicle which powers the rear wheels when it's needed. We taking a left. Right. Right and the left. Right and left. Okay. Yeah. What is this section okay, called? Okay. So, uh this is again on the side incline. Okay. The same like this. From uh, which side I should be on the right side? On the right, yeah. Okay. The right wheel on top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it is kicking in power to the rear axle as well because right. traction right. levels are not the right. best. Right, right. So when you buy this car, does it come with all the spotter support? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like if I have to go off road well, alone? Well, depends on how much I'm willing to pay. <laughs> <laughs> because if I go off road, so here also huh. you can go. Huh? Okay, if I plan to go off road, <laughs> yeah. uh, like I have cameras inside, yeah. but do I get the eyes outside as well? <laughs> Like I said, <laughs> no, but the car is effortless, very smooth. You can get down after a while. Yeah, I'm waiting for your door to open. Then I'll get. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pretty mean, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, you can just go through. Oh, but down assist works very well, very smooth. Steering is also very light at low speeds, and when driving at 220 kilometers per hour, steering doesn't feel light, so it weighs up pretty well. This is what happens when you drive a global car. This is a global car, of course. Five star rating from NCAP for both adult and child protection. We go left. Yeah. And then right. Take the right turn. This right. Yep. that was my back flying in the boot the left coming up and there's so uh, any articulation section over there let me know when the left uh, ahead ahead right sorry it's going to yeah will one wheel go up I mean all these uh, obstacles are like really very easy for this car honestly. Yeah. Uh -huh. We That's should throw in <laughs> throw in some rain as well. <laughs> Then we'll know what what's going to happen. Oh. Okay, I I don't know where to go but yeah. left? Yeah. Just keep going straight. Okay. Is that the last obstacle? Yep. It didn't take 20 minutes for sure. Well. <laughs> Yeah. 
Zubair? Le lo short. That's it. <laughs> okay, I was banking on the car. Yeah, <laughs> my instructor tells me I should be on the brakes and I was banking on the car's uh, downhill assist to actually have my back. It's too short for the bike. So that was a cake walk. And we are done, right? Yep. Continue. Now I can drive this car to the airport and catch my flight. <laughs> Where do I park the car? Between the So you are telling me I was the fastest person to complete this whole section. Yes, you were. Where is my prize or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can ask them. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Bye, okay, guys. Nice meeting you. Same here, yeah.